What up? Tube. Let's get it going. Tube. What up? What up? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Greetings and salutations. YouTube, what's going on, man? EYL University, what's going on? Let's let everybody get in here. Let's get it rocking. We back. We back, we back, we back, we back. Came straight off of the plane, was in Miami. Shout out to all the good people out in Miami. Had a good time out there for the weekend. Happy belated birthday to Mike. Happy birthday to the <laughs> Might be, definitely is Mike. Yeah, it was good, man. First and foremost, we gotta pay homage to the greatest basketball player. The greatest player. You know what I'm saying? Like, why you gonna start there? Why you, why you gonna rile the people up like that? The greatest basketball player of all time. Yo, man, he, he definitely is it's definitely a 1A. 1A? Can we say 1A, 1A? Maybe 1A, 1AA? The best that ever Ain't nobody do else in the conversation. I'll the, give him that. The best to ever do it, man. LeBron James. <laughs> that was a historic, that was a historic, legendary performance under extreme circumstances in the bubble. That's kept it, Kept his composure. That's different. Kept his focus. And um, Laker Nation, salute, salute. <laughs> Yo, that's different, man. You strip a man, especially a guy like LeBron who's a family man. You strip him away from his family for three months uh, with all the stuff that's going on in the world and his role in all of it, right? Like this is not just an athlete. This is a political activist, a social like juggernaut for our community. So to have all that and still come out triumphant, different level, hey, man. Kareem yeah, too. What's going Kobe on? And, Kobe nice, and LeBron nice, tied for three. Blazer. Nice blazer, brother. And, and we didn't plan this either. Nah, we did, nah, man. Nah, we nah. did. <laughs> How y'all feeling? Good, feeling man. Good. good. Man. How you? Very good. Happy Monday. Y'all the hardest working people in show business. <laughs> y'all was out in Miami, living it up. So, um, but yeah, kudos to, to, to LeBron. Yeah, um, man. For somebody to be that great for 17 years. Different. Whew, Never been a dude this good for this long. Yeah, his long his long his longevity is is phenomenal. And then we also the reason why we wear pink, if you guys didn't know, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Bro, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Breast Cancer Awareness mm -hmm. Month. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be wearing pink all all month. We got merch. We got pink merch on our website, eyl or earnyaleisure.com. So salute to all of the survivors of breast cancer. Rest in peace to all of the. Um, women that have passed away from breast cancer. Yeah, and salute to all the families that uh, have dealt with the, the, yeah. the circumstances. And, and a portion cancer. a portion of all the proceeds of our pink um, merch will be uh, donated to um, breast cancer um, foundations and charities. So yes, yes, yes. We gotta, you know, always try to sp sprinkle and spread some some good uh, positive energy out there. So that's what we are gonna be doing this, this whole month of October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the hoodies, the t-shirts, crew necks, we got it all. Yeah, yeah. Women, men, kids, feel free. And Ian, that, that is a fly blazer. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just double down. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we even go hate, man. That, what is that? Rose gold? What is that? Rose? <laughs> rose gold. Rose. Uh, rose. Got a rose blazer on. Rose. Yeah, it's, it's loyalty rose. <laughs> we rocking pink and loyalty rose all year. <laughs> rose. That boy looked like a bottle of champagne, man. Okay. That's championship. That's the championship. Everybody on YouTube, I love y'all. How y'all doing? Um, I want you to put who are, who are your top five favorite players. I got Mike at one, Kareem at two, Kobe and Brian tied for three. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's a bold K statement. Kareem, that's a bold. Kareem don't get enough credit. <laughs> well, that statement would mean that Kareem is the greatest Laker. Is that what you're saying? I don't know anybody on the planet post eighth grade that was better than Kareem. Like he dominated because he wasn't a Nike athlete and he ended up being pro black that cut the marketing. If we want to talk about the business side of it, but if we looked at pure numbers, pure numbers, nah, he's definitely in the conversation. He's definitely in the conversation. So not every level <laughs> would have won four. It was most if, dominant. If they allowed him to play as a freshman, he would have won four in college. He won three, man, won dominant in high NBA. school. Yeah. Nah. Dominant, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're New York native, man. We like to dominate things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what New York do. Shout out to Kareem, man. <laughs> shout out to shout out to all of the, the like I said, man. The Lakers is a legendary storied franchise, so it was it was dope to see that happen. But shout out to Miami too, you know. Shout out to Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Butler. Butler shout out to Jimmy Butler, man. Jimmy Butler put on I a hell of a performance. Energy. 
Yeah. And um, shout out to everybody in the bubble, man. I know it was it was difficult circumstances for them, but they uh they was extreme professionals. Yeah, it was zero, zero tests, zero positive COVID tests. Yeah, the NBA did a, three did and a, a half months. They did a great job, man. And um, we're gonna send good good well to Dak Prescott. Everybody Absolutely. said I look like everybody said I look like <laughs> Dak Prescott. No favor. I, if, I, if I hear that one more time, but uh. <laughs> salute to the salute to Dak Prescott, yeah, man. Get well, get, get man. well soon, man. That's a, that's that sucks, man. For real. That's crazy. They said hopefully yeah, you get right. five hundred mil on the deal. He has been sitting out. Well, he didn't sit out, but he was waiting to sign the deal. They tried to franchise tag him for thirty six million. He wanted forty, and um, he had a tragic injury like that. But hopefully, you know, he's able to recover and come back. Yeah, yeah. man. So let's let's jump into it. Um, earn your leisure is a big, 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 big week for us. So I'll run down what we got going on. Um. Shout out to our brother, MG, the mortgage guy. He makes his return yeah, on the podcast I- tomorrow. That's a legendary situation, man. We haven't, we haven't spoke about real estate in a long time. We've been um, focused on stocks, but real estate, we coming back to real estate tomorrow. He had to get a lot of stuff off his chest. The state of the, the, state of the market in um, mm-hmm. Corona. Talk about so many different stuff. International investing, um, business owners, how they yeah. can get mortgages. Cause you know, that's always a problem for business owners as far as not showing enough income. Yeah. Talked about that appraisal process, appraisal process, um, how to become a loan officer, interest rates, all kinds of stuff. So, shout out to Matt, man. That's going to be a legendary episode. That's going to be live on YouTube at five o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, and on all audio outlets. So make sure you check that out. Yeah. BYO University, we got a big class. Now before we go there, we got uh, orientation. Everybody that is new to uh, Earn Your Leisure, we got orientation tomorrow at seven. Tomorrow at that's seven. That's going to be big, yeah, man. Ori- I, I saw the slideshow already. I will be there at seven, man. I'm excited. Shout out to Janet, who is going to be hosting that. So if you are new, if you are a new earner and you've joined over the last couple of months or so, and you're having a tough time navigating through the investment group, you're trying to figure out our schedule when we drop episodes. Tomorrow at seven is our first orientation. So yeah, that's, gonna, that's gonna be big. And then we got a disability insurance class on Wednesday. A lot of people, we always talk about life insurance, but you're actually three times more likely to become disabled than you are to die prematurely. Disability insurance is something that, especially business owners, you don't really think about, but it's extremely important. People think disability is like getting in a car accident, stuff like that. That's one part of it, but common stuff like back injuries, mm-hmm. um, back injuries are the most common form of disability. You can be out of work for six to 12 months. That's like you live in paycheck to paycheck. That's a financial crisis. So you got this disability insurance class on Wednesday. So big, big, big schedule for us. Um, and yeah, man, we, we, uh, we looking forward. So yeah, let's let's get it going. Before I give it to Ian, Troy, can you let's, um say the disclaimer? Let's do it, man. Disclaimer. You know how this goes, man. If you if you are new to this, get familiar. Do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational prop purposes only. It's very important that you do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This disclaimer has been brought to you by the good folks at Earn Your Leisure. Yes, and I'll, I'll put the info for anybody who wants to join EYL University. We're currently running 40% off, promo code EYL. Ian, would you like to talk about Red Panda? Yes, if you guys want the easiest way to know where to get into the market and what to invest in, you can join the stock club. You guys have probably have heard about it and seen me post about it like crazy, but it's my uh, family of uh, investing all stars. Yo, I saw that post today, man. That was some. That was a big one. <laughs> that was a big the process post. Works. <laughs> the process works. The process works. Yeah. Trust so, it. kudos to my guy. Um, he doesn't want to be known, but. Kudos to you, my brother. I appreciate you a whole lot. But yeah, I mean, I've tried to make it easier than ever um, because I've stated before when I first started investing, everything was so convoluted and complicated. I wanted to just dumb it down and be able to give an answer in less than 30 seconds about what to invest in. So if you guys are interested, you can go to joinredpanda.com. And if you have any questions, please email me at ian at joinredpanda.com and I can help you out. There you have it. I'll put the link in. All right, let's get let's get to it, brother. Let's go. Okay, let me let me make sure I can. Uh, Troy, let me share on the other one real quick, please. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, and shout out to to the the new albums today. Um, Janet, she uh, had a request. She said, "Yo, my favorite artist is Lauren Hill." I said, "Don't worry, we got you." Since orientation is tomorrow, I'm gonna take care of you. So we put up the score. Shout out to the great, the great Lauren Hill, the great Wyclef. 
And prize. That's a fact. That's a fact. Are oh, you there? Yes, I am. I right, got you. Here you go, right here. Okay, perfect. Let me know if you can see. It's a host disabled. Yeah, it's going right now. Yeah, we got you. There you go. All right, you good. Perfect. Okay, let me know if you guys can see my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah now we can see it. You can see it. You okay, good. perfect. So once again, kudos to the King LeBron for his win last night. Uh, the title of tonight's talk is going to be defense wins championships. So I want to show you what to do to protect yourself from being robbed of fees and expenses um, because everyone talks about gains, but people don't, I think, stress enough how bad losses can affect your retirement or what I would like to call your freedom account. So once again, if you want the easiest and fastest way to know which companies to buy and where to get in, join the stock club. Uh, the results have been pretty damn amazing if I say so myself and Rashad will put the link in for you guys. I appreciate you. So my vision is to give you what you need. So the next four generations of your family will know how to invest. So we've already gone over fundamentals and how to assess a company. We went over technicals, right? Now I wanna give you the last pieces that you need to be able to evaluate a company on your own so you never need anyone else including us and you can pass this information down to your family so this is what we really want to get to depending on where your journey starts or where you are this is where we want to get to the top of the mountain legacy this is absolute true freedom you're able to take care of yourself your family your friends this is uh, the hierarchy needs by maslow but the financial spin on it so I want you in your notebook or in your phone to write down where you are on this pyramid. And I'll give you about five more seconds to do so. In two years, worst case scenario, if you're down here, I want you to aim to be here at the accumulating wealth phase of your life. Or if you already are accumulating wealth, I want you in two and a half years to be focused on being at the legacy portion. So Bloomberg, you guys posted it last week. You saw it, 401k fees are eating your retirement savings and half of Americans don't have enough for retirement. And this is the thing where we have to really break down every single part of what takes away from your long-term account. Uh, 20 billion collectively will be added annually to the nest eggs of Americans, even if just 0.4% in fees were cut. And over the course of your lifetime, let's look at how this adds up. I know they seem minuscule at first, but once you go through them, they have damning effects on your money. So even if you just get 5% of fees over the lifetime of your retirement account, and let's be honest, there are not many places that are going to charge you a 5% fee over 30 years. But if they did, just even 5% over 500K is 25 grand lost. 5% in fees over the lifetime of your retirement account. If you have a million dollars, that's 50 grand lost. Most of you are paying between two to 4%. So I know you are losing much more than that. But look at this. Let's say you invested a million dollars over a 30 year period and you put it into the S&P 500, which has been screaming at you like crazy. If you paid a 1% annual fee, you would have $7.61 million. But look how much different it is just paying a 3% annual fee. So it's millions of dollars being taken out of your account for almost nothing because most advisors did not call you in March and April when the market was falling apart. So you must do everything you can to cut fees and expenses as close to zero as possible. So of course you guys are going to ask, what can I do to reduce my fees? Okay, great. Let's walk you through it. First, we've talked e about this before. E Go ahead. Can you can you put your plug? Just I think it's a, it's a little choppy on your mic. You might have to just plug your plug. In. Pl plug my plug in. Yeah, yeah. Just see, just see if the connection is. It's like every every thirty seconds is like a little choppy. What about now? No, you sound good right now. Okay, let's try it. Yeah. The devil uh, trying to stop us from this. Great <laughs> you sound perfect now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So this is the first thing. Number one, invest in low cost index funds with low expense 
ratios. Number two, this is not talked about enough, but we have to stay away from falling stocks with diminishing returns. So if we look at Ford, year to date is down 17.69%. Everyone was happy about the Bronco. And I'm like, the Bronco is not going to save Ford. It cost OJ a lot the last time he was in it. It's not going to work out. Can. Same thing. Year to date is now 45.28%. I know there's a hope that if Biden becomes president, that marijuana be will become nationally legalized. It's probably not going to happen, right? GE is down 39% year to date. And AMC, we'll talk about it later. Regal is going out of business. They're down 44%. Almost nothing draws down your portfolio like big losses. So that's the second thing that you need to do. Okay. Third option we've talked about, self-managing. But this area right here is really key because these Tic Tac fees add up and dwindle away your account. So the commissions that you pay, great. Let's try and reduce those. Second thing, broker fees are key. So you need to either negotiate or go to another brokerage where the broker fees are not as high. Third, the spread costs are for my traders, depending on what platform you trade on, that has a huge difference. And this is really key for my traders as well. The number of trades that you take matter over the course of a year, because not only does it throw, out, uh, throw off your risk to reward ratio if you're not at a high winning percentage, but for every trade you take, you are taxed or given a fee. So you have to add that into the cost as well. So if you take 88 trades on a year, and let's say you're doing it on TD Ameritrade, I think it's from I love you, I appreciate you. But the costs are high to do trades there. You would be better off going to a broker where the, where the fee cost isn't as high and then mutual funds. Most of you are paying 1.3 to 1.4% in transaction costs per year. So all of these fees together can add up to an additional seven to 8%, but we're not looking at it. Like you guys ever notice when you look at your like Xfinity bill or whoever you have cable with, sometimes like once a quarter, they'll throw some fees in there that people are not reading. So you have to take all this into consideration and go through and see how you can chop these down because 7% over the course of a year, over 12, 13 years, really, really, really adds up. You also need to check and look at reduction of administration fees. Most people are not looking at that. And then also you have to look at your account fees, your exchange fee, which is very hard to negotiate, but also your management fee. So unless you have funds with Kathy Wood or any other famed investor that's getting extraordinary results, there's no reason to pay a very high fee. And real quick, on, on just to go back on that spread cost, the spread cost is the difference between the ask and the buy, correct? Yep. All right. So like, I, when I was I was reading about, you know, the good folks over at Robinhood and that seems to be sort of the issue is like people need to really pay attention to that because there could be a differentiation between that and another brokerage, let's say a TD Ameritrade or an e mm -hmm. Um, And that's where people don't realize, but that's where the money is being made. Right. When you don't yes. realize that there's a spread cost there and like something costs you 715. Right. For the bid or the, the bid is 715 and they're asking nine dollars for it. That, that big difference at $1.85, that's going somewhere, y'all. So please pay attention yes. to that. And, and for my traders as well, when you win your trade, act, make sure that you actually got filled at the limit price in which you had that order executed. Because sometimes we can get so happy with the win, we actually forget to check if it went to our exact price. They, yo, they so got you, they, Ian, they, they, they got you sounding like Optimus Prime right now, bro. You underwater. They, they got you underwater. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. What about now? No, just go ahead. I'll tell you if it, if it starts buzzing again. Okay. Um, so where do you find stocks to invest in? I've gotten this question a lot the last two weeks. We've covered it before. Other people have covered it. But look, there's a simple way. Download, download the Yahoo Finance app. I want you to click at the bottom of the app on the search tab. And it's going to pull up this amazing screen here. There are a couple of areas that I need you, need you to focus on, however. I need you to look at tech stocks that move the market, because you know I love tech. Most bought by hedge funds, crowded tech hedge fund positions, and most watched by Yahoo Finance users. So once again, we want to look at the ones that are in tech. 
because tech stocks are leading the wave, right? Then most watched by hedge funds. And I know some of you guys are asking about the slides. I'll put the slides out and you guys will have them. We'll put them in the Facebook group. And my, most watched by Yahoo Finance users. There's a key correlation that I want you to walk away with. On each of these lists, you're going to consistent, consistently see top companies on them. And it's going to give you an idea of the dominance. So if you see a company, so like Amazon, and it's on three or four of those lists, if you're a beginner, that's a good way to start to look at a company that you could invest in. So if you look at Amazon, they have extreme dominance for a couple of reasons, but they're attacking on every angle. So they have Amazon Prime, which is streaming and recurring revenue. They have, the, of course, the Amazon Store, which most people are know, know them for, which is e-commerce. They have Amazon Echo, which is a smart speaker, Twitch, but the big money maker is Amazon Web Services. So the cloud is the future and the future is here now. So let's talk about the election. We're not that far away. 22 and days. And for my trade, it's, man, it's gonna be here in, in a blink of an eye. And I want my traders to get ready because you're gonna have a profound opportunity if you manage your trades right to do pretty well. And also for my long-term investors, you're going to see some dips in the market leading up to which you will be able to get some companies that you really want. So in 2008, the Dow dropped 500 points because uncertainty leads to people selling off and shorting the market. If we look at 2012, the Dow dropped again. Okay, 2012, this night I stayed up all night, did not go to bed until like 7.30 or 8 the next day. This is a hell of a ride down. The Mexican peso fell, ES fell, Russell, Dow, um, VIX was through the roof. So for my traders, you are going to have to probably trade less contracts, but go for bigger targets because the fills are going to be worse. The slippage is going to be higher. But in this market, like for example, the Dow is at 18,400 and then it eventually dropped to 16,000 and some change. There's a lot of money that can be made for those who, those of you that are looking to do puts and for those of you that are shorting in the futures market. So be prepared. But after election and everything settles and we, it's clear on the, who the president will be, the market will go back to doing what it's always done, which is rise. So here's some other ways you can look up companies to invest in. You can look up the top holdings of Fidelity. Apple, Microsoft, and Visa are on this list. All the three really, really, really good companies to invest in. You can look up the top holdings of Charles Schwab and also any other hedge fund that you are a fan of. You can look up their top holdings and mimic what they're doing. And if you want to invest into the cloud, Amazon, Microsoft, and Alibaba are the major players in that space. So now you never have to guess what to invest in. I mean, we've given you probably 50 great companies already. We're going to want to do some more. We're yeah, going to go there. Like we're going to go there, Ian. <laughs> we're going to go. Yeah. Um, but now you don't have to guess what to, what to get. And you're able to be able to do this on your own because I don't want you guys to be tethered to us for the rest of your life. It's my job and our job to make sure that you're given all the tools you're needed so you can do this on your own. And more, most importantly, pass it on to your family. So this is the most important chart I've ever probably placed on the show. I need you, especially my traders, to look at this. This is why protecting profit is so key. All my traders, please tune in. And I know you've heard this, but let's dial in. When you have losses, not only do you have the financial loss, but you have the emotional loss that comes with it. So if you lose 1%, you need 1% to get back to break even. But let's look at if you lose 40%, you need 67% to get back to break even. And as a trader, if you lose 40%, you damn near need 100% to get back to break even and get your confidence back to break even. So this is why when we talk about hedging, you don't want to have any big losses. And I know there are some companies, Hertz, Ford, I beat up on a lot, but I don't want you guys to sit in a position for two years and be down 33%. Now let's look at it when you get down to 70%. Mm. You're down negative 70%. You need 233% growth to get to break even. Your confidence is then shot too. Because let's be honest, if we all lost a trade or picked a bad investment, the next time we go to hit the button on, on a broker, 
we're a little bit more hesitant to do so. So keep this in mind. You want to keep your losses very small, minuscule. And that's why even on the futures market, once I'm up a few percentage points, I like to lock in break even plus two. So if the trade whips back against me, I'm not losing all of my money in a trade. So for all of my investors and traders, please memorize this. And if you get down 80%, you need 400% to get to break even. That's a tough hill to climb. Ian, is, is there a specific like stop limit uh, as far as percentage on, on a stock that, that you recommend? Is it like 15, 20%? 20% maximum. And that's if I know the company is a dominant company. Other than that, I like to keep it to, if it's long-term, I may average back in maybe at 5%, but on my trades, I'm not trying to risk more than one to 3% of my account on any trade. Okay. Yep. So on the volatility side, it's always going to be here. Don't, don't like run from it. Embrace it. The market is going to be volatile because in order for us to go up, we have to come down and it provides a great opportunity for us. So from 1935 to 2018, the S&P had a 2% swing either up or down every month. The S&P go, type it in chat. The S&P 500 goes up 2% either up or down every month. Yeah. It's normal, yeah. right? Kudos to my guy who had to. Oh, it, it, I haven't seen a bungee jump jumping in so long now. I know, right? And over 4,000 days, we had a price movement of over 1%. Like Apple was up 6% today. So volatility is already baked in. If we look over time, though, for my long-term investors, SP is up 25,000% in that same time frame. So I know everyone keeps predicting that there's going to be some great crash that we're never going to recover from. I'm telling you, the Fed, the Fed is going to print and use all the money they can to keep us propped up as long as we need, because if not, we will suffer the fate of a third world country if they don't. So since 25 to 2014, 1925 to 2014, Stocks and aggregate have returned 6.7% annually. The bond market has produced 26 and cash is 0.5%. So that's why you can't keep a duffel bag full of money underneath your bed, even though it may be fun. Um, you're going to lose and get a negative return on your money. So these deep, these deep drops in the market presents the greatest opportunity for us all. Everyone type in chat, I will not fear a dip. I will smile when they happen. We have to re retrain our mind around that. So I want to go to chart of the week because I know some of you have been saying we don't do enough charting. So I want to talk about a company. And kudos to everybody in the stock club where we had a fire, rapid fire session. So this ticker is N-U-A-N, Nuance Communications. Here's the great thing about it. The stock has had a great return, but I want to show you so in 2012, it hit this high and we're past these high levels again. I want you to put it on your watch list, but it's not there yet. It's too high. We, you guys can also refer to the price line. We want to wait till it comes back down and then we can acquire it at that point. But also you can look at the past at previous highs to know where it's going to go. So previously, 2012, the stock was at $30.95. And it's returned there and is a little bit higher now. It's at 34.43. It's going to come back down. So wait for it to drop back down to 25 or 20 area. If you like the revenue, if you like the fundamentals, you can then acquire it, hold it, and then you can have some edge in the market there. Let me go back to the slide real quick. It's my short-term investing lesson of the week. So if you're nervous about trading, it's either because of one or two reasons. You can't tell what the real direction is of the market while you're in it, or you're over trading and don't know what your stats are. If you're a trader, type in chat, what is your win percentage? Because if you're winning at 60 or 70%, you should have very little hesitation. You know where the hesitation comes in? We over trade because we think that we're not good enough to replicate the results that we have based on our stats, or we don't fire when we have our signal. So that's why like a lot of times, some people will be like, hey, I wanted to get in here, but I waited and then I bought it 10% higher. 
So the solution for that, if you are an investor, if you are a trader, take one trade a day. And after 10 days, you'll know what your percentage is. And then based on that, if you have a great win, to, uh, if you have a great win percentage, you can determine what your risk to reward is going to be. Here's the thing. Even if you bat 33%, you can make money. Some of the greatest traders of all time that have made the most money that are, that are billionaires and multimillionaires bat less than 40%. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to bat 99% to make money in the market. But I'm noticing, uh, I'm getting messages from you guys who are like, I'm terrified to take a trade. And I'm like, just play to your stats. So if you are trading horribly, use a 15 to 1 reward to risk ratio. If you're a decent trader at 50%, you can use 10 to 1. If you're amazing, Rashad, Troy, come on, <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> do 5 to 1. But 15 to 1 will put you at ease because you don't have to be as accurate. And let's say we miss three or four trades. Okay, great. On that fifth or sixth trade, it will make up for all the losses. And going back to that ratio of how much we need to recover our confidence, because it's not just the percentage. It's also the confidence when, once we sit in front of the computer to take the, then, the next trade. So 15 to one reward to risk will help you out a lot. Um, question of the week. What are some tips to bounce back from a psychological loss? Um, one, write down what you did wrong. If you get two intraday trades that lose, walk away and go outside. That's when you can dig yourself deep into a rabbit hole. So let's say you have a trade and you don't stick to your rules and you lose 10% and then you lose 11%. You're now negative 21. If you keep taking trades and you're driving the wrong way, that is called self-sabotage. Please type in chat. I will not sabotage myself. Stop and walk away. After you have assessed what you have done wrong and after you're done being pissed off, write down, what would I have done differently? It's really fascinating. When all of us look at a chart and we have no money in it, it's clear as hell what to do. Oh, I'm going to get XLK right here. Oh, okay, great. I'm going to wait for it to drop 8%. I'm going to get it right here. And guess what? We put our money in or we start to buy and it's like, let me just hop in and see. So stick to your areas in which or your signal in which you want to get in and then have a tight rule structure you almost want to yeah you almost want to be like a coder like if this happens then i will do x because less is more less is more i know uh traders and investors make it seem like a gunslinging contest but literally the fewer the trades you take the better so if you take say 12 positions per year long term let's say maybe 24 swing trades and 48 intraday trades, you're good. You're good there. And then the last thing is my question of the week for you guys. Uh, what is the biggest fear of the market you have? And most importantly, what is stopping you from following your plan? I've talked to a lot of you and a lot of you are amazing at picking the companies, but you're deviating from your plan because I think you may be trying to impress others or we want to post wins on Instagram and, you know, show off and get the kudos but we're doing this for our family so we can have freedom. So if we can do anything to help you, of course, let us know. But my question of the night is what is your biggest fear and what is stopping you from following your plan? And as always, I love you guys so much. Um, thank you for checking it out. And I hope this was able to help you in some way. That was, that was Excellent performance. No, this guy, I mean, that was, that was a lot of free. That was free. That was free that game was, right there. That was a lot geez, of free game to freedom. And and the audio got tremendously better too. You must have had a thunderstorm that passed over the maybe. <laughs>